Oh glorious day, it's time to look at the worst albums of all time, as collectively decided on by the critics that have an aggregate score and have a weighted score over on Metacritic. What's up everyone, my name is John, welcome back to Beyond AR TV, and today I'm going to be reacting to the worst albums of all time. These are the lowest scoring albums and the ones that I'm going to look at because they score on a overall aggregate of 0 to 100. I'm going to be taking a look at a lot of the ones that came in under 50 because that is very rare. I mean, most albums, especially these days, I feel that critics and publications must have some sort of agreement where they come together, shake hands, and say, oh, well, we'll give you a three and a half out of five because we want to do an interview with you or something. Hey, that's a sidestep for a video that I've already made. If you want to check that out, publications that won't criticize anything, then there's a card on screen. Other than that, let's get to the reaction. Drop a like on it if you do enjoy, and subscribe for the love of music, or for the hate of music, I guess, with this one. I will leave a link if you want to go check this out for yourself on Metacritic, but the way that I did it, I expanded the details so that we won't spoil the list for ourselves as we go through it. I already know some of the albums that are going to appear here, because one, obviously I've heard them and I know that they probably didn't get reviewed well but also some of the ones like in my research through the years going through like Wikipedia pages and stuff and then heading over to Metacritic for myself I've seen that they have a score under 50 so it's inevitable the first one to come up on our list under 50 is Dark Horse by Nickelback it's got a 49 sitting at a 49 and the description for this is the Canadian rock band releases its sixth album produced with Mutt Lange well Mutt Lange probably isn't doing them any favors with that name that just I don't know, it sounds a little bit weird, but Mutt Lodge produced it, and honestly, I don't, mm, I don't entirely get the hate for Dark Horse. I mean, I think Spectrum Pulse would be one of the only critics that agrees with me on the fact that it's not that awful, but then again, critics love to hate Nickelback, so it's not that surprising. Switzerland by Electric Six got a 49 as well. The Party Rockers return with a third album. I've heard this. I think maybe the song Gay Bar is on this album. If not, maybe it was the one after that. But again, I've heard that. I understand it. I never really thought that they were that funny, but some people just thought they were hysterical. So if you were into that type of humor, maybe, but this album for me was the no. Oh, come on. Seriously? All Things Bright and Beautiful by Owl City is sitting at a 49? That album is actually pretty great. I mean, I think it's probably Owl City's best album overall. Oh, easy target on this one. I mean, it's so naive and bright-eyed and innocent. I get it. Some of the later stuff, not good, not good. I would understand if it was like one of those albums, but all things bright and beautiful. You did my boy Adam. You did him dirty. Paula by Robin Thicke also got a 49. The seventh full-length studio release for the R&B singer was dedicated to his wife. Yeah, if I listened to that and I had been his wife and we were kind of drifting apart and we were maybe going to get a divorce, I would just push him further away and be like, I'm slapping a restraining order on you. Total Sanarchy by Lil Xan, of course, the cheese king right here. The guy that's fucking pulling guns on people in parking lots and he's getting picked on. Poor Lil Xan. Well... Overdose on some Hot Cheetos again, man. I don't know what to tell you because that album's fucking garbage. It was the worst album of last year in my eyes. Take a Look in the Mirror by Korn got a 49 as well. I mean, I'll admit that it's not one of their better albums, but that's surprising. Guilt by Mims. Now, that's an album that I have not heard about or thought about in ages. He's the guy that rapped, this is why I'm hot. This is why, this is why, this is why my career hasn't gone anywhere since then. Moon Landing by James Blunt was pretty derided as well. I remember that one. I remember sitting through it one time, and I was like, nope, never again. You're beautiful? More like Weird Al said. You're pitiful. Can't Be Tamed by Miley Cyrus is on this list at 48 out of 100. And honestly, I like the title track a lot. And Who Owns My Heart with like Rock Mafia was pretty awesome. I don't think I've heard the full album in like a decade, so I can't really fully judge, but I don't remember it being that bad. I Love You by The Neighborhood. Now, I knew this one was on here because I stuck up for this album. I've gone out on a limb for this record many times. I mean, I talked about it on a list of albums that critics hated, but I actually loved. Well, this is certainly still one of them. I mean, I don't love it as much as I used to, but the atmosphere on this album was really, really good, and critics just panned the shit out of them. The King and I by Faith Evans and the Notorious B.I.G. comes in next at a 48 as well, and I don't know who in the name of God thought that that was a proper collaboration that should have happened for an entire album, but it did happen, and I don't know why. I'm sorry. 
Monkey Business by the Black Eyed Peas. Yes, indeed. That record was pretty rough at times. I mean, we got some great anthems from it, like Pump It, but it's just so hard to take it seriously. I'm surprised, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised, I should say, if the end and the beginning aren't even lower. Streets of Gold by 303. This was the second album that I ever reviewed on my main channel, and it's just a disaster at this point for me to go back and be like, at one point in time, John, you thought this was a great album because I genuinely did. My first kiss, I rocked out to that. I rocked out to the opening track and then just some of the other ones like Eyes Closed and stuff. I was like, oh, I'm such a badass. I'm listening to Streets of Gold by 303 and now I just want to barf. Poor Gavin Rossdale. Why did you have to do this? You did it to yourself and you know you did. It's like an adult, like, R&B, pop rock, like, ballad affair. You probably remember, like, Love Remains the Same. That was the big AC radio hit. But still to this day, I can't fathom why he just decided to take on these directions. I mean, some people would be excited that Bush got back together, his band, but they haven't been much better since then. This one seems a little bit unfair. If not now, when by Incubus, it's certainly a boring elevator music styled album, but it takes patience. I just don't think people were patient enough with this album. I don't think it's a good album, but I don't know if it's like a 4.8 out of 10 or a 48 out of 100 bad. Now something that might even be lower than a 48 out of 100 bad is Stained, chapter five. This was one of the first albums that I was ever gifted in the form of a burned CD. And I listened through it and I thought it was so deep at the time and I was listening to that and like break the cycle. And now I look back and I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'll always have these albums right here waiting for me. Louder by Leah Michelle. No, the Glee star, right? Yeah, the Glee actress includes production from a bunch of big names or else names that I don't really recognize outside of Stargate. But nope, that album was pretty bad. And I remember a lot of people feeling the same way. And poor Leah got forgotten about, but this album, it just didn't feel like her. Yours Truly by Sublime with Rome also got a 48. And yeah, that sounds about right because Sublime Without Bradley is Sublime with Rome, and Sublime with Rome is pretty shit. Take it even a point lower for the next one. 47 for Evolve, I'd throw it lower, but I'm glad that critics pretty much just bashed the shit out of this thing collectively, just sitting around kicking, punching, and just saying, why did they do this to us? Evolve, I mean, come on, man. Like every song on here sounds like they're going for something different, and most of them are terrible. Called it, didn't I? The beginning by the Black Eyed Peas. I knew that that would be here. That and the end, I'm sure, will hopefully pop up as well. But the beginning, I feel, was even worse than the end because it had like songs like, oh, you know what? Never mind. We're not even going to talk about it. Directly below that, Sorry for Party Rocking by LMFAO. Yep, that sounds about the most 2011-2010 back-to-back combo I can think of. Poor Screaming Bloody Murder by Sum 41. You do not deserve to be right next to LMFAO and the Black Eyed Peas with a 47. I just talked about this when I did Sum 41 ranked. Uh, shameless plug there if you want to go check that out. But seriously, this album is pretty great in its own right. It's very underrated and critics were just mean to this poor soul. Everybody Wants to Be on TV by Scouting for Girls. Oh man, I remember discovering this band and I heard like one song and then I thought it was okay. And then I like dug up more of their stuff and I'm like, wow, they're super generic, really bland and they have no personality at all. No, One of the Boys by Katy Perry? Seriously, that is interestingly low, like very low on this list. And that is a, uh, hmm, I don't know. I mean, it's not that bad. I know some people now are like, I kissed a girl is problematic. And I'm like, ah, but it's still, still my jam. And so is Hot and Cold, Waking Up in Vegas, and the title track. Praise the good lord that the plain white tees got crapped on here with Big Bad World because this was a big bad stink fest of bad songs. One, two, three, four, I believe was on this album. And I recently tore that one a new one in songs that I just can't stand from my childhood. Please go away. I hate remembering that the plain white tees were such a big thing. Oh no, this is Forever by She Wants Revenge. Now that is... That's a little surprising to me. I do not really remember that album all that well, but I liked their debut album a lot. It had Tear You Apart and some other songs that I got into that I just can't remember by name because it's been so long. 
but it's surprising. That's a name I haven't seen in a while. Maybe I'll have to revisit that one. Is it really that bad, you guys, if you've heard it? Hotel by Moby. Now there's one that we can all regret the past on collectively. I feel like that was not one of Moby's better outings. It was a little bit embarrassing, frankly. And as somebody who is more of a casual fan of Moby, I suppose, mm, no on this one. Love? With a question mark? Love with an upward inflection by Jennifer Lopez? I guess? It's a really bad album? J-Lo returns after Twins with a deeply personal seventh album. Hmm? Um, I don't know if I'd call it that because it just sounded like, well, you know what? I don't even remember because it was that forgettable. We're gonna speed up the process a little bit here. I'm gonna skip down because there's so many records here on like the last two pages sorted from like best to worst. We're at the worst section of Metacritic. I wanna get to the good stuff. So let's hit the fast forward button. It's a shame, but I can't say that I disagree really. One More Light by Linkin Park is listed as one of the worst albums of all time collectively on the ones that are on Metacritic. Keep in mind, a lot of old records, they don't have enough of a weighted score that they can collectively fund to actually make the list. So it's mainly stuff that's like from the 90s onward, I would say. And One More Light, it sucks that that was their last album with Chester because it's not good. Harvard Dropout by Lil Pump. Need I say anything here? Because obviously, one of the worst collaborative albums that you'll ever hear, Metallica and Lou Reed on Lulu makes the list with a 45. And again, I say yes, this is a one of the worst albums I've ever listened to. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I'm surprised and disappointed that Billy Talent 3 made the list. I do love Billy Talent 1 and 2, and I like a good amount of 3 and to sit it in a 45. Good God, who, who, who pissed in your cereal? Ha <laughs> ha, the Spice Girls forever, yeah. Oh, tell that to my cousin who blasted them constantly growing up and we hung out all the time and I had to hear this so much, please never never again. Of all the critics out there, I was one of the ones that was more kind and lenient to 8 by Incubus, but again, I genuinely see it. I see the flaws with this project. I just can't help but enjoy some of the songs like Throw Out the Map and and then Nimble Bastard. I mean, there were good tracks on there. There were also some ones that definitely felt questionable. I mean, producing with Skrillex, it could have gone either way. I didn't mind it, but I get it. Here's my childhood in a bottle right here. Good Morning Revival by Good Charlotte at a 45. And uh, holy shit, this thing has not aged well, except for I Don't Want to Be in Love Dance for Anthem. It's still the Anthem. And also the track with M Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold, that one's pretty good too. Hell in a Handbasket, Meatloaf, duh. XXX Tentacion makes the list posthumously with his album Skins, and I couldn't agree more. I just, uh, the label, fuck you greedy labels for piecing together these things. Just let it go, let these people rest and stop squashing out all of these samples, all of these voice memos, and then trying to turn them into songs. It's disgusting. The Weirdness by the Stooges, Iggy Pop had returned to them at that point, so Iggy Pop and the Stooges or whatever the incarnation was at that point. A 44 sounds about right, because I don't think anybody out there is gonna tell you this is their best album. I love that this Mariah Carey pick for Charm Bracelet says, after proving that all that glitters is not gold, can the best-selling female artist of the 1990s manage a hit in the 21st century? Ooh, boy, don't tell that to her fans or her stands, because I am not touching that one. Not with a 40-foot pole. 39 and a half foot pole, I guess I should have said. Good job, Metacritic. Good job, all critics out there, for collectively squashing this bug that was pesky, kept getting back in the house because the chain smokers were all over the radio in like 2016, 2017. Memories do not open. Never seen a more appropriate title. Don't open it. Don't touch it. It looks like a Tumblr room in the album cover. This is the most 2008 thing I've ever seen. I had forgotten about Soldier Boy, but oh my. I Soldier Boy Tell em. The follow up to SoldierBoyTellEm.com. That was the actual name of his debut album, featuring that song, Crank That. Ooh, thank God we moved on past that. And then we got into even more shit because we've got the likes of like 6 9 and Chris Brown and everybody else still walking around. Well, not really. I mean, they're often behind bars. Ooh, this Black Flag album shouldn't happen. Don't undermine the legacy. What the blank? Yeah, what the? That's the look on your face. I mean, they must have known what they were getting into because it was like a new lineup and everything. And then they just put it out. And then most people were like, 
what the what the fuck were they thinking? It's worth noting that everything had to have had at least seven reviews in order to be actually counted and weighed on Metacritic and considered like one of the worst of all time, so. Super Collider by Megadeth at a 41. Oh boy, tug at the collar there. Megadeth, uh, um, you know, again, the undermining the legacy thing, you kinda did it there. Okay, I'm prepared to take on the hate train because I don't hate this album. I mean, everybody just acts like it's the worst thing ever, but I got a CD copy sitting right back there that'll tell you otherwise. I mean, look at this photograph and all of these other songs that are just so far away for far too long, and I would listen to it because it was saving me. I, you liking any of these puns? They doing anything for you? Don't mind the album. Not at all. 14 Shades of Grey by Stained. Oh, if only they had put that out about 15 years later, then they could have timed it with the release of 50 Shades of Grey and maybe profited a little bit extra money. This is the first album in five years for the boy, er, man band. Never Gone by the Backstreet Boys. What a title that definitely tells you exactly what it is. I mean, that's like all the cartoons that explain everything in the opening sequence, and it's like, okay, we get it, you know, they do this, and they got this superpower, and here it's like, oh, never gone, because we've been away for five years, but we're never gone, and you know what? To their credit, they're still around. Liz Fair's self-titled album, oh man, I remember hearing this back in the day. Why Can't I? That was the song, We Are Far Away from Exit from Guyville at that point in her career. Don't know what happened here where she tried to go like teeny pop and she was, yeah, as this says, she was 36 years old trying to be Avril Lavigne. Oh boy, no, 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 this is scary. In fact, it felt like an identity crisis and I kind of felt guilty listening to it. Jagged Little Pill Acoustic by Alanis Morissette. Now that, that's interesting, using only acoustic instruments. I've never actually heard this, so can anyone confirm? Is it that bad? Holy shit, because Jagged Little Pill is so acclaimed. Take that, Chris Brown, a 39 out of 100. One of the worst albums of all time, collectively agreed upon by the world. Graffiti. Oh, I remember listening to I Can Transform Ya, and uh, that's about it. I remember hearing the whole album, and I don't know why I did. Shout out to 6 9 as well, because I just talked about him and Chris Brown earlier, and now look where they are, at the bottom of the totem pole, where they belong. And in fact, uh, in his case, behind bars where he belongs, and not the kind of bars that he attempted to spit. What a dummy. Another partner in crime, Fortune by Chris Brown. Trash it, trash it, and thrash it, because that's what it deserves. The old pals in Puddle of Mud made the list. Oh, I'm so, I'm a proud father over here. Life on Display by Puddle of Mud. This came out in 03. I think this was their, was this their, oh, okay, so it was their second album, maybe? I mean, who really cares? It's Puddle of Mud. <laughs> Nine Track Mind by Charlie Booth. Oh, Charlie, why'd you do it? Why did you do it? You went from like making those YouTube intros back in the day for like Shane Dawson and Philip DeFranco and Shay Carl and everyone, and then you somehow got on the soundtrack for the Fast and the Furious made See You Again, and then turned out this utterly garbage album that was just, oh, me and Spectrum Pulse gave that a thrashing and oh, it deserved it. I will say he improved on the next album though, so I like what an artist can learn from their mistakes because this was an abhorrent mistake. Poor Lil Wayne, he tried to he tried to be a rocker. He did that on Rebirth, and then he tried to do guitar solos and he got laughed off the stage and laughed off the internet, and he never did it again. I was waiting for Rebirth Part 2, but we never got that. Of all the sequels that he just, for some reason, keeps doing to everything, even though they're just in-name sequels only, we never got Rebirth Part 2, for whatever reason. Testify by Phil Collins, oh Phil. How the mighty fall. We're nearly to the worst of the worst, only two to go. And of the first of those, we have Results May Vary by Limp Biscuit. Hell no, burn this album on a fire. I thought Chocolate Starfish was terrible, but this, oh, I, I, I just, I've heard like half the album and I just can't even fathom. Why would anyone listen to this band? They're such garbage. They're so asinine. The lyrics are just intentionally, I feel like, trying to stir up somebody, trying to stir up a bro and be like, oh, I need to go get a fist fight with someone in a pit. But outside of that, why would you ever do this to yourself? And now, the worst album of all time, according to Metacritic, the worst record ever. Playing With Fire by Kevin Federline, and it's by a large amount. I mean, before that, we had a 33. We drop all the way down to a 15, so like barely a soul in the world heard this album, but if they did, then they hated it. And again, thank you to my cousin for having this album. She didn't even like it to her credit, but still, she was so into Britney that she just had to get the album. She bought it because she wanted the drama. 
And this is like sticking, I mean, if you're into being a masochist or whatever, just, I mean, cut your ears off instead. You'd probably be better off. After this quick scan through some of the worst albums of all time, I would love to know what you guys think, so sound off in the comments section down below. Do you have any thoughts? Do you have any defenses for any of the records that you saw? Again, some of them were cut for time, so check the full list in the description down below. And if you did enjoy this video today, then please drop a like on it and consider subscribing for the love of music. Check out another reaction that I did on the channel by tapping this card right here, or tap over here for another recent video I posted to Beyond. Other than that, if you'd like to donate to my Patreon to help videos like this keep coming each and every month, then hit the top link down below or else the annotation in the corner. Other than that, I'll see you soon for more on Beyond AR TV.